Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week. We're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, before we get to the uh, the first strictly new knife, uh, it's actually giveaway time again over on our Instagram channel. We've got a set of three knives to give away to you folks, kindly provided to us by the fine folks at Victorinox, and it is the 2021 limited edition orange Alox set. Now, in addition to looking good, the orange Alox, of course, came out very well. It's actually a really nice cross section of tools that could really outfit all manner or, or all kind of areas of your EDC. You've got your classic SD for keychain carry, Pioneer X for some more primary carry, and then of course you've got the Hunter Pro for a nice larger locking blade as well, heavier utility or some outdoor use if you wanted to do that. Um, so you're really gonna be well equipped with this set. Hunter Pro's got that great four inch blade lock back, now the Alox aluminum, in addition to looking really good, get a little bit of extra traction thanks to that uh, the grid pattern on there as well. You got a pocket clip on this bad boy too. Pioneer X takes the classic Pioneer and adds that nice pair of scissors as well. Good solid rounding out of tools there. And then there's something about the uh, the classics in the in the nice colors of Alox that I really like. You do lose the uh, the toothpick and tweezers on this, but. They're slimmer than the, uh, the Celador models and there's just that much classier. They've got a really, really nice look. I'm saying that a lot because it's true. Um, but if you want, to, want a chance to win those, just follow the link below and that'll take you over to our Instagram profile. All right, first up, we've got one of the new premium versions of Benchmade's ever popular bug out model. Uh, more expensive coming in about 255, made in the USA. Now, if you're familiar with some of uh, Benchmade's higher end versions of some of their knives over the years, you probably recognize this, uh, this configuration. Uh, you've got carbon fiber for the handles, blue accents here on the, uh, what's the word there? It's a thumb stud. It's a thumb stud. I wanted to say pocket clip. Sometimes the mind wanders, guys. Blue thumb studs and backspace are paired with carbon fiber and the blade itself is gonna be S90V. So this is really, the option in the in Benchmade's lineup for the really high levels of stainless edge retention on a fancier package too. It's gonna make a nice gentleman's or office carry. But dimensions, you know them, you love them from the standard bug out. We've got a three and a quarter inch drop point blade, nice thin blade stock, almost a full flat grind. So it's always been a really good slicing knife. The geometry is spot on for that. And when you throw in that S90V with that really high edge retention on top of that, you're gonna be able to be slicing for days with this thing. Handles are nice and comfortable. There's a bit of contour on these still. They didn't go with uh, just a, a flat or a flat handle, which they could have done. Uh, they definitely kept kind of the spirit of that original bug out in the shape of the handle. Fixed, nestles into the hand very nicely. Pocket clip is the same mini deep, deep carry device. It is ambidextrous, com or completely reversible, I should say. The lock, however, is ambidextrous. So lefties, righties are gonna be able to use this knife no problem. Of course, you got that great uh, wrist flicking action you can do with an axis lock. Or of course, you can do the, uh, the more deliberate, maybe more socially friendly closing and opening if you want, if you don't wanna be like flicking the blade around. Uh, just a really nice option. If you've, and if you've been waiting for kind of a fancier gentlemanly version of a bug, bug out without having to resort, uh, to like aftermarket scales or hardware, definitely worth a look. We've also got the new Benchmade Steep Country Fixed Blades from their Hunt line. Uh, these are uh, pretty affordable actually for a, a US made fixed blade like this, coming in about 110. Now there's been some kind of refinements of this uh, over previous generations. Uh, this, the blade geometry itself is a bit slicier, handle's been tweaked a little bit. The uh, crenellations here aren't quite as aggressive as they used to be. Uh, as far as the feel and handle overall, it's uh, it's a thin handle. It's not going to be like a uh, you know a big bushcrafting blade where you're going to be bearing down on it for uh, for long hours at a time. It's more about a precise and agile hold, especially given its kind of hunting uh, hunting pedigree. It's not so thick that it's going to get in the way. The rubber grip gives you a little bit of extra, well, grip, um, and it does handle very nicely. The pinch point at the thumbs works very well. You're going to be able to control this blade very nicely, very easily, I should say. In a way, this is kind of the fixed blade bug out, actually. Um, not identical blade profiles, but you've got a three and a half inch drop point, and likewise, it, you know, it prioritizes 
the slicing characteristics overall. The blade stock is not quite an eighth of an inch thick here at the thickest point, and you've got a slight distal taper all the way down to the tip as well. So as soon as you get right behind the edge, it's not even a full eighth of an inch thick at the spine. Wide profile with that full flat grind. It's just very, very, very steep where it's just gonna slice away. There's, you know, they do a lot to just kind of get the blade out of the way of whatever you're cutting. Now also like the bug out, um, weight is, is very much a consideration with this knife. Uh, with the sheath, you're only like 4.1 ounces. So not a lot for a lot of capability overall. That S30V on the blade is gonna hold an edge a good long time, and you've got that, uh, that slicing pedigree to go with it. Now the sheath itself is Kydex. Uh, one thing you don't get um, is an actual belt attachment, um, which I kind of wish they, absolutely wish they did include. Um, but a uh, standard tech locks and a lot of other things will fit this sheath thanks to the uh, hole and slot construction they've got on both sides. So at least there are plenty of options that don't cost a whole lot. Tech lock itself is like uh, 15 bucks. Um, the new Civivi Terzola T-clips are only a few dollars. Um, so you can get those as well. We'll make sure to leave a link to those uh, if you're looking at these, but uh, it'd be nice if they included one out of the box though, I'll say that. All right, next up is the new Claymore Autos from Benchmade coming in 195. Now, interestingly, Benchmade is really marketing this, pushing it as one of the stronger knives they've ever built, um, but it does so without a uh, kind of a heavy duty handle material. Uh, but the mechanism itself is supposed to be exceptionally strong, but the weight's kept down in this case with grivery on the handles themselves. Blade steel is CPM D2, uh, so you've got edge retention on par with your regular D2, but because of the finer grain structure and the particle metallurgy construction of the CPM version, it should be a lot tougher than your standard D D2 as well, which is gonna come in handy on a knife like this for sure. It's a nice smooth coating on there to help with corrosion resistance, and you've got the, uh, the combo edge here as you can see as well. As far as feel in the hand, one of the advantages of the handle construction they've gone with here is that you don't have a whole ton of extra weight from the handle, which traditionally can be maybe a bit of a problem spot for a lot of folders. And as a result, your balance point sits right at that index finger. So this is an extremely neutral knife in the way it handles. It's gonna be very easy to manipulate without uh, kind of having to think about it. It's just a very natural moving blade. Speaking of the moving blade, this is of course a push button auto. You do have a secondary safety there, works in the open or closed position, and it fires out with a nice smack. Push button itself is, uh, is not completely ambidextrous, but the pocket clip in this case is, you've got that deep carry nature there. And certainly lefties can use a push button no problem. It's just not gonna be completely identical to a, a righty using it. One of the, uh, the cool little details on this knife in a, uh, it kind of nods towards the Claymore mine is in uh, Morse code here on the front, you've got FTE, like front toward enemy, just like the, uh, the mine, just like the, uh, the blade too for, uh, for certain uses. Uh, pretty cool pieces. The, uh, the action, like I said, is really nice. And I'm really happy to see Benchmade kind of stepping up the game for their, uh, their mid and lower tier priced uh, steel options. Like we've seen crew wear on the new Adamas's CPM D2 here, just some good stuff being introduced. And now of course, we've got the newest green version of the 945, the smaller version of the 940 Osborne. Um, interesting that they introduced a, a black on black version first, as opposed to this classic green version, but the wait is over for these green versions. These guys come in about 174 right now. Blade length is under three inches, but you've still got that nice S30V blade steel in this case. First production on this particular blade that you can see on marked there on the back, but that kind of reverse tanto profile as they like to call it, um, does work pretty well for a utility knife. You've got a bit of belly here at the front. The tip is still very usable without being overly chunky. It's just gonna be a nice user, but because the spine is treated a little bit differently with the, uh, the kind of wild looking shapes going on, you've got something a bit more interesting to look at than just another drop point or clip point blade. Handles aluminum, sculpted in the green here, just like that uh, the classic version. Unlike the classic version, we do have an open-backed construction here. So instead of that ridged purple backspacer on the original, you've got purple standoffs here, or uh, yeah, purple barrel spacers to keep things apart, but you still maintain that nice color balance. In a way, this is kind of a, another kind of gentlemanly option. Um, 
The, the original 940 I've always thought was maybe a little bit big for a, a gentleman's knife, even though it kind of has the, the fanciness to go with it. But now the, uh, the new minis, they pick up the slack a little bit in that regard, I think. They uh, definitely would make another good uh, good option and a good counterpoint to the uh, the new version of the bug out we have here. So a couple cool new uh, gentlemanly options from Benchmade this week. All right, next up, we've got a much more budget-oriented blade, uh, new versions of the CJRB Mylea. Uh, these guys come in about 38 bucks for these new black-coated blade versions. Uh, but you still get that RPM9 uh, powder metallurgy steel as well. So really, it's a pretty, pretty good bargain at that price for a powder metallurgy product. A few different colors. Uh, the jade with the black looks good with its red accents. There's also a, uh, a red-handled and a black-handled knife. And even though these are small, it's only about a three finger grip because of the flare here, it does hold fairly securely. It's not the, the biggest grip by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly not something that I feel like would fall out of my hand if I had to, had to do any longer cuts with it. Definitely a solid patch there for my hands to hold on to. You've got a deep carry pocket clip as well. It is reversible. You've got a nice hidden lanyard attachment point there. And one of the cool things about this knife is kind of the form factor in which it folds up as well. Uh, you do have a front flipper and thumb studs to open, but a very good small knife. It's gonna carry nice and easily in the pocket or even that fifth jeans pocket. This is gonna be another really good option. Ball bearings in the pivot, of course, so you've got that really good action that you just saw and this nice utility bla based blade shape to back it up. All right, after a couple of uh, reverse Tonto profiles, let's go with a more uh, traditional Funny to say traditional when it's an Americanized Tonto, uh, but a more traditional Americanized Tonto in this case, the Crudo Carcino 10 LTE, which comes in about 103 right now. Blade itself here, three and a half inches. It's got a pretty nice profile uh, for this non-Tonto loving person like myself. I do kind of like the, uh, the shape here. It almost looks like there's a little bit of rise to the spine before it comes down. Overall, just very nicely drawn. Flat grind on this guy, 9CR series stainless, so you've got that, uh, that kind of 440C level of performance. Stainless steel handles, copper uh, backspacer here. Feels very solid in the hand. It's got a bit of weight to it. It's not you know one of these lighter weight folders like we just looked at, um, but it's primarily intended to be kind of a stronger, but still classy looking tactical knife. You've got G10 inserts on top of the, the uh, frame lock here on the back. G10 inserts on the front as well. And one of the cool things about this knife is you've got myriad opening methods going on. In addition to just your standard flipper with ball bearings there in the pivot, you've got this tab here at the front, which works as a front flipper. You've also got the thumb disc here, which works as a thumb opener for either hand. And in addition to that, it'll also work as a pocket deployer, similar to Emerson's Wave. So you've got four kind of discrete or four distinct opening methods built into these crudos. Most of them, in fact, but this one kind of shows it off really well. But I think even beyond kind of the, the tactical intent that a lot of crudos stuff tends to have, I just, I think this particular one has a pretty nice shape. Like I said, I like that blade shape. The handle's not uh, too bulky. It is a little bit weighty, like I said, but that does impart a feel of confidence to it. Just overall, a really cool piece. All right, next up, we've got a few more pieces from Tor Knives, which I showed you uh, their jank shank last week. Uh, and here are a few more of the, uh, the many, more, many other models of theirs we've just brought in, uh, which I'll keep showing as well. This is the Cryptea, or Cryptea, uh, comes in about $2.95 right now. These are American made, and this guy is similar to that jank shank. Starts with some pretty thick steel here. This is not, you know, this is not a, a slicing EDC knife. This is more of a don't mess with me type of EDC knife. Blade length is about four inches. You've got S35 VN steel. There's a pretty cool black stone washed finish here. Looks very nicely done. You can kind of get, uh, you get a little bit more of the character of kind of the raw tumbling finish on this than on some black stone washed finishes I've seen. And the edge itself is nice and thin despite the very thick blade stock and it is very sharp too. Handle itself is G10. It's both contoured and scalloped out. So it's a, it's a good kind of in between of a normal, just smooth finished knife and a, a scalloped knife, which Usually uh, you see it a lot on some flat scales. This one bridges the gap. You've got the extra surface area, but it still feels nice and comfortable in my hand. Even though I don't have a ton of room in here, uh, my slightly larger than average sized hands anyway will still just fit in there. 
As far as the sheath, uh, there's also no, uh, no attachment method included in the box, but your tech locks will fit. It's a true hide kydex material. You get the, uh, the click in of that kydex and a really nice leather like texture on the outer surface. So it looks a little nicer than just your, your, your typical kydex texture, which definitely looks uh, a lot more utilitarian and definitely not as premium as something like this. All right, next up, we've got two more knives from Tor that uh, skew a bit more towards the outdoor and survival arena. We've got the Field 1.0 and the Field 2.0, coming in with a, a, six in, a six inch and a four and a half inch blade, respectively. Uh, more or less same shape, just scaled up or down. Both of these knives, whether you pick the, uh, the big or the small, both have a really nice balance as well. Like kind of like we talked about with that Claymore earlier, sits right about perfectly at that index finger on both of them. So you've got a very agile moving blade, especially on these guys. The, the difference between that and like the Claymore before is these are a bit more overbuilt feeling in the hand. They've got a lot of sturdiness to them, certainly going to withstand a lot of use. But the blade stock is about 3 16ths of an inch thick. We've got CPM 154 steel, nice drop point shape with plenty of belly here too. So you can use it for some of that skinning stuff if you need as well. There's a really nice spine treatment going on. You've got some jimping here with chamfered edges so that they're not super bitey, but they're or not super aggressive anyway. They're not gonna be that uncomfortable, but they give you the benefit of the jimping. And then the leading section on both of these is Pretty close to a 90 degree anyway, or, or pretty close to uh, crisp, I should say. Definitely crisp enough, I think, to, to uh, strike a ferro rod, but if you're used to something like, I don't know, like the ice skate type edge on the, uh, the LT right, it's not quite to that level, but it certainly gives you that added bit of utility as well. The handles are really nice. They're uh, fluted or dynamic fluted walnut. They've got this fluting kind of leading forward. Uh, the idea behind that is as you push forward into a cut, it's going to help the uh, help the force of your hand or help guide your hand in the right direction. And you've got the a more natural and a blacker finish option on both of them. Each one of them accented pretty nicely with some copper liners. I think they look really cool. Now we were talking about the uh, the kydex type sheath on the Cryptea looking a little more classy than normal. This guy, these saddle leather sheaths on these fixed blades, even classier still. These are really nicely done. The finish on them is excellent. You've got enough rigidity built in, so it's not like a floppy leather sheath. And these are gonna fit a large tech lock as well. The, uh, you've got the rivet, rivet spacing here uh, to work with that. You are gonna need to supply your own, uh, own attachment method with these as well, but not something you see too often on a, uh, a leather sheath like this, which is pretty cool. It uh, gives you the ability to carry it uh, just standard vertically, or you can horizontal carry it like cross draw or small your back pretty nicely too. Just a really cool piece. I love the, uh, the kind of texture on it. Um, it's the, the die on it is a little bit uneven, kind of purposely so. So you get a little bit, almost like a wood grain built into the leather itself. Pretty cool. All right, we'll have more from Tour again next week. I'm kind of spacing it out, uh, spacing it out for you guys because there is a lot. But we'll leave a link to the whole uh, whole selection below. Uh, but now is another tactical knife. This one from Viper. This is the Fearless. There's a few different handle options on these, and the prices come in uh, about 213 for the satin blades, and a little bit uh, over 230, about 233 for these black bladed versions. Uh, and that blade itself is Sleepner steel, about six inches long. And you've got this d double hollow ground dagger profile, single edged only though. You don't have a, uh, an edge on the top section there. And the handle itself looks pretty unconventional. Uh, and in fact, I'm not quite sure what the functionality of the, uh, the top guard here is uh, where right in front of where you would place your thumb, but the rest of the handle works very intuitively. But you've got a really nice natural place to put your thumb, like I mentioned, and this uh, pretty distinct forward finger or index finger groove. Your fingers are going to naturally go to rest there. And then you've got this nice wide and girthy handle here to wrap the rest of your fingers around. It just feels rock solid. Now they're calling this a brown burl micarta. It's essentially burlap. Uh, but I like the, the kind of usage of the word burl there in, a, in this case. Um, but a few different colors of these are available to pair up with the, uh, the satin or the black blades. And you got that protruding pommel there at the back as well. It doesn't come to a sharp point, but it's certainly going to concentrate force very nicely. It does come with a Kydex sheath. Very nicely done. They do actually include some belt attachment hardware with this guy. You can see it's a Vegas holster there on the back. Um, but again, kind of a standard tech lock hole pattern going on. So you have the inverted, the cross draw, and the standard options 
all baked in to this knife right out of the box. All right, next up, we've got uh, three new, but I only pulled one of them, uh, versions of Jake Hoback's Choppa series. This is the MP6 coming in about 365. Uh, in addition to another Tonto and another drop point profile, we have this kind of modified Tonto shape, I guess you could call it that, with a nice uh, kind of curved leading edge going on. Uh, and that's roughly a six inch blade of 3V steel. So a lot of toughness here in addition to that nice edge retention. It's got a nice rustic finish too, which I think is gonna look really good over time, especially. It really kind of suits the character of this knife, I think. Handles here are G10. You've got some finger grooves going on there near the front as well. And despite not having either an aggressive amount of texture or any kind of contouring, just kind of holding it, choking back a little bit, because you do have a couple of different handhold positions on this handle, but choking back a little bit and giving it some swings, it actually feels pretty secure. Uh, obviously, I'm not striking anything, I'm striking uh, oxygen, but um, just the feel in the hand, I think, uh, I think it has, it, it bodes well, let's say, anyway. Now, the grinds on this are probably the most interesting thing. Um, it's not a, fl or a smooth flat grind, you've essentially got a scalloped flat grind, both on the primary and the leading bevel. And the idea there is essentially they want to uh, create or make it harder for things to kind of stick to the edge. Now this is a tactical knife, obviously. This, you know, you usually see at least this concept more on kitchen knives, uh, but as far as the usage on a tactical knife, um, actually, let me be a little more specific. Um, Hoback actually designed this for kind of SWAT operators to use as a smaller breaching tool. So if you are wedging this in, uh, and using it as a breaching tool, that's probably where that's gonna come in a little bit handy. Maybe it, it keeps things from getting bind, or <laughs> from binding too much. I almost said from getting binded up. That wouldn't have been good. Uh, we were really putting you in a bind. <sighs> it's Thomas with the dad jokes this week. Mm -hmm. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Um, but in any case, uh, it does create a very striking look. Uh, you see something similar uh, on like the RMJs out there. So Hoback's not the only one out there doing this. There is a bit of a uh, established precedent for this. Uh, but like I said, a couple cool blade fin or blade shapes in addition to this one too. Sheath, again, we're dealing with Kydex. And again, no, uh, no belt attachment hardware included, unfortunately. But your tech locks will work on this guy. All right, couple more fixed blades. We're very, uh, very tactical fixed blade heavy this week. And we've got the Bastinelli Anomaly, which is a Doug Markaida design made in Italy by Fox, like a lot of the, lot, pretty much most of the Bastinellis anyway, uh, coming in at 160 right now. For that, you're getting this integrally constructed knife out of N690. Because of the uh, kind of the divot here in the handle section, it, looks almost like some of the drop forged knives out there, but I don't think this is. Uh, I'm assuming they milled that away, actually. You can see some of the milling lines in there. But like a lot of Fox stuff and Bastinelli as well, they really sweat the edges on this, you know, this bare metal handle so that you don't have any sharp edges going on. It's completely crowned over so that it's nice and comfortable. Even the inside of the ring feels very good. Now, of course, you can see here with this little uh, two and a quarter inch blade, it's a hawk bill sharpened on the uh, the back side or on the, the reverse stroke, so to speak, for specific martial arts uses, especially. This is not really designed as a, an EDC type of piece. This is pure self-defense and tactical martial arts all the way. You do get that good N690 blade steel though. You get some pretty nice cutting geometry. If you had to press this into use as a, uh, a utility knife, you could if you needed to. Uh, but again, purpose built, uh, and you've got a really nice purpose designed sheath to go with it as well. Kydex, and you've got a retention loop here on the side, which is gonna allow you to carry it, if I can get the snap to go. It's a pull the dot snap. Um, so <laughs> you have to put it on and take it off the right way. That's operator error in that, in that case. Um, really good feature to have actually, because if you, if you do happen to snag on it, it's not gonna pull open but you're gonna be able to carry that very easily horizontally on your belt in, uh, in whatever configuration suits your style. All right, one more fixed blade for today. It's another Bastinelli. This is the Tulum or the Tellum uh, coming in at 340 right now. Nice double-edged dagger profile here, uh, M390 steel at about two and three quarters of an inch. And you've got that plain edge on one side and the partial serrations on the other. So you can use that to kind of suit, uh, you know, alter your grip to suit whichever type of cutting style you need for your given task in front of you. Now the handles here are actually pretty interesting. 
Um, this is a full tang knife, or at least it does come past this back uh, bolt here. You've got three bolts over this full tang and a completely encapsulated tang. So I guess technically this would be more of a stick tang. But you've got two halves of micarta bolted in and they're finished very nicely. You can't feel that seam, maybe just barely. Um, certainly just running your, your finger over it, not using your fingernail, you don't feel that at all. So you've got this nice smooth section going on and these jimped sections fore and back. You can just make out the, uh, the join line in a few places, but it feels really good. I almost would love to see this in a, uh, a single edge profile maybe even a, a different blade shape because I'm really digging the handle here. There's plenty of length to it and it's a handle that's going to be able to be manipulated pretty well. Again, going back to uh, that Benchmade we talked about earlier, that handle there on this particular knife is you know meant to be manipulated, not so much meant to be gorilla gripped. It's there for fine control and very nicely done. And that micarta is going to give you a lot of grip, not just because it's micarta, but because all of all that jimping too. Last sheath for today, it's Kydex again. And because this is, you know, a symmetrical profile, it'll go in either way. It'll be completely ambidextrous. And you've got this nice clip on there. So you could carry this inside the waistband, maybe in a pocket if you've got pockets large enough or clipped outside on your belt. Sky's the limit on your options for that. But if you do want to use tech locks, these small tech lock will work in this case. And uh, I know I've been giving these, uh, these guys a little bit of guff today for for not including something, at least an option in the box. I will give them credit where credit's due. At least all of these sheaths will work with kind of the popular standardized stuff out there like the, uh, the tech lock family and some other stuff. So at least they're, uh, they've got an eye towards that. And I definitely appreciate that. All right, next up, we've got some new D rockets. We've got some really small Lanny's clip mid techs. These come in about 550 and they're pretty ornate. A uh, few different handle options. This is the Europa, U sorry, Europa, can't even say it. Europa Moon Camo. Um, Europa. That's like earlier, I was calling these things Victorinox because I thought it was funny, but apropos of nothing. These knives are pretty cool though. Um, they've got a lot going on in terms of, like I said, the, the ornate quality. You've got those fancy handles. You've got a Vegas Forge Damascus blade coming in about two and a quarter inch, so it's not huge, but you've got a nice full flat grind for a uh, kind of a slicier profile. And you've got this interesting milled kind of D rocket symbol there, right there on the blade. We'll try to get some uh, a good shot of that. Thomas may need a macro lens for something like that. Um, but nicely finished. You've got a crowned backspacer and crowned spine. No half stop on this, but it is a nice consistent pull on the open and closed. And that speaking of the pull, you've essentially got a dual long pull. It's on both sides with the center section even milled completely out. So it should be pretty easy for uh, pretty much most folks to get in there and open that blade, no problem. All right, next up, we've got some new Microtech and these guys are going pretty quickly. So if, uh, if they are not available when this video goes up, I do apologize uh, sincerely on that. Um, but some new siphon pens, these are the siphon twos. This one has the, uh, the apocalyptic bronze finish over black. You see that on the pocket clip and on the deployment mechanism here. And if you've kind of not experienced these, uh, these clips before, or these, the deployment on these, they're pretty interesting. Uh, it's called siphon, but it almost makes me think of like an old school water pump because you push it down or pull it up like that. And that does extend the, uh, the pen tip there out the bottom. You got enough length there. This will kind of, depending on the size of your hand, that might kind of hug back on, on you, uh, in a good way, but keep your fingers out of the way when you close it because it will snap close. I, it, it bit me a little bit earlier. Me so, too. It's a pretty cool option though for a, a smaller pocket pen if you want something about the size of a, a Fisher bullet pen, but you want something a little fancier, a little more ornate. As far as the ink, this is not a, a Fisher ink though. This is a Pilot G2 Mini. Uh, so you're gonna have that kind of compatibility built into that guy. Uh, next up, and in my mind, even cooler is the new Troodon Minis coming in about 300 bucks right now. Blade length on these is uh, 1.99. So we're coming in right under that two inch mark uh, with double edged finish. And the steel on this one is M390. But it's got the same style, like, or, or obviously has the same style as the Troodon if they wouldn't have named it that otherwise. But it translates really well to this mini size. You get the same kind of vibe from the, uh, the sways to the handle that kind of break up just the, uh, the standard rectangle of an OTF pretty nicely. Um, so good job done on that for sure. Of course, you've got 
Microtech action, nice and snappy on a small blade like that. And you've got your deep carry pocket clip with the uh, ball breaker, ball breaker, glass breaker on the end, which will you know unscrew that. It'll allow you to reverse the clip as well. But yeah, not much more to say about that, really. It's just another really cool piece. Uh, if you're going for like something a little bit different in the uh, the sub two inch than their uh, their popular exosets, another pretty cool option right here. All right, next up is some 30th anniversary editions of Baron Sons kind of entry level ballast songs, who you know have kind of dominated very uh, very heavily in that low price market. Uh, but you've got a uh, black handled version and the copper zinc handled version as well with that kind of 30th anniversary logoing going on on the blade. It is a four and a quarter inch blade. You've got the uh, drop point profile here. As far as the action on these, they are pinned pivots, so they're not adjustable, but they should be pretty decent out of the box for most, you know, again, low end things. These aren't going to flip like a high end Bally or even like something like the uh, Kershaw Lucha. Uh, which comes in at about, I think, 120 still. Um, so if you if you want to make the jump up, that's a good option. But if you're getting into it and you want a live blade ballast song, Bear has been out there and and, and killing it for uh, for a long time. So this is kind of the uh, the commemoration of that. All right, last but not least for this list, we've got the Armbar Slims from Gerber. That's the uh, two of them. There's the Armbar Drive, which has the driver arm, and you've got the Armbar Cut which comes with the pair of scissors right here. So nice, uh, nice sizable piece of scissors. And you've got on both of these a locking blade, this kind of modified sheep's foot shape of just a simple stainless steel, nothing, uh, nothing special there, just a always with you utility blade going on liner lock on those. Now these do come with a, a split ring here. So you could key ring carry it. Obviously, it's going to give you a much bigger pair of scissors on your key ring than let's say, you know, your Swiss Army classic right there. Uh, and then of course, if you want more functionality than these, uh, these two tools, you've got the original arm bars, which are, are a little bit thicker. Um, actually, no, we've got three tools here because buried in the back is your bottle opener. Every good multi tool has got to have a bottle opener, right? But this one, you've got the uh, the gray aluminum version, but you've also got the orange here on the arm bar drive, uh, but you can get either color with either tool set. And what's nice about the uh, the arm bar or the driver portion here is in addition to being able to use it kind of in a, a 90 degree portion, there's no half stop or anything, but you can use it to put a little extra leverage on there. It comes with its own bit, but I really like that it's magnetic as well. So it's going to hold the bit quite nicely, maybe even transfer a little bit of that to the screw that you're trying to take out as well. So pretty nice. All right, that's all I've got to show you today. Make sure to let me know what you thought of the new knives and accessories down there in the comments. As always, make sure you head over to our Instagram for that giveaway. Like I mentioned, if you want to get your hands on any, any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And be sure to click the link in the top right corner for our knife rewards program. If you're not signed up already, that way you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you put your money down on one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.